Hello, everyone. Welcome to another episode of the Centennial Conference Corner. My name is Amber Thomas, and I am virtually alongside Emma Morgan Bennett, former Swarthmore volleyball player, Marshall Scholar, and newly announced NCA Top 30 uh, Woman of the Year honoree. How are you doing today, Emma? I'm doing well. Um, I have just recently resettled to London, so I'm still getting used to the time difference and, of course, staying safe in quarantine right now. Um, but yeah, all considered, I'm okay. <laughs> That's good. So thinking back to when you found out that you were nominated for Woman of the Year, kind of what were you feeling and what was your reaction? Uh, well, to be quite honest, when this was all happening. It was in the midst of lockdown and I'm from New York City. So there's a lot of things happening and I guess, and it was also right on the cusp end of um, uh, actually in the beginning really of the resurgence of Black Lives Matter movement protest and George Floyd's um, recent murder. So in fact, I was like quite distracted and feeling very far away from sports and collegiate athletics. Um, and then I got this, this news about the nomination um, and was centered back into these conversations and questions of why diversity in athletics matters to me. Um, and so that was really grounding. Um, and then also to call into question again, um, how does Swarthmore operate? How does the Centennial com uh, Conference operate around questions of inclusivity and excellence and diversity? Um, and, and really, what can we be doing better? Um, and so it was kind of a, a really good moment for me at the end of my collegiate career um, to feel kind of this moment of retrospect um, and also a moment of, okay, well, where do we need to go in the future and how does this nomination um, affirm the work that I've been doing for the last four years, as well as urge me to continue pursuing that line of work. I think one of the things that is so great about this award is that it not only focuses on athletics, but also academics, um, service and leadership, which are all things that you've had time and work in, like you talked about. And I know one of the things that you were able to do on Swarthmore's campus is the ADI Coalition for Athletics for Diversity and Inclusion. Um, can you tell us a little bit about what it is and some of the great things that you guys were really able to accomplish? Yeah, um, it's an organization I'm really honored to be a part of founding um, and hope and hope that it continues with the strength that um, we really started it with. So it's essentially a coalition um, that operates similarly to SAC. So we ask for representatives from each team, although it's not mandatory, um, but we have, we actually had the major like the vast majority of Swarthmore athletes and athletic teams represented, but it's essentially a council um, that works to highlighting and championing um, conversations and events surrounding, event, um, surrounding identity and diversity. Um, so that can be anything from uh, a movie night, um, a, a round table discussion, a brunch, or um, also larger events like uh, a teach-in, which we did this past spring, which was really the, the graduating <laughs> um, <laughs> event for me, where I was like, wow, I need to, I need to retire after this. <laughs> Um, but it's an incredible, um, essentially it's an incredible community within the larger community of athletics um, that encourages both student athletes of color, but then also allies um, to really come together and say, we can, we can be inclusive. Um, we can be a family that not only recognizes each other's differences, but in fact embraces them so that we can have better team dynamics, better um, uh, coach athletic dynamics and um, I think that that's also a really important part of it, which is that it's about students, but it also is for the larger athletic community. Um, so that includes coaches and admin. Um, and so we have some incredible mentors as well. So that's like the general spiel. Um, I think that it's really exciting to see, I mean, in all honesty, we, I, I, it started with, with me and my, my friends and teammates um, starting it. So I think that there's a lot of growth that it can receive. And it certainly um, in this moment is, uh, uh, an organization that needs to be institutionalized and receive institutional support from NCAA, from um, Swarthmore, from the conference or whatever that looks like going forward. But I, do, I don't think it has any limits and the sky's really the limit for this organization in terms of what role it can play in the future. I believe it's really important. 
you've been able to do some amazing things at such a young age. What can we expect to see from Emma Morgan Bennett next? <laughs> um, that's a great question I'm asking myself. <laughs> um, I think, so right, what's really lovely about this opportunity that I've been awarded through the Marshall Scholarship um, is essentially two years to really buckle down into what makes me a leader um, and an ambassador for the United States and the larger world um, surrounding the issues that I'm passionate about. And for me, that is um, issues of, around health, access to health. So I studied medical anthropology in college, um, conversations about uh, gender and reproduction. So my thesis was about race and reproduction, um, as well as what are the roles of visual media and um, digital media that play in bringing forth equity. Um, so in that line, I guess I'm really excited and honored to have these two years where I'm fully funded um, to be pursuing a, a documentary and film degree for the first year at Goldsmiths University. And then next year I'll be heading to Oxford for a public um, health degree. And so the combination of those two really pushes me in this exciting direction of trying to be a leader um, in, in the public health world that's saying, listen, we need to start using YouTube. We need to start using TikTok and, and Snapchat and all of these visual and digital medias um, to really democratize access to health. So hopefully I'll be a leader in that regard. Um, but I'm also really just looking, to, like, looking forward to taking some time um, uh, to really focus on myself and, and my friendships and um, experiencing this whole new world that I've just entered across the pond. That sounds so exciting, Emma. <laughs> <laughs> so let's transition over to some rapid fire questions. Well, I'm terrible at Heads up. <laughs> <laughs> if you could buy any type of food right now, what would you buy? Sushi. What kind of sushi? Uh, oh, um, uh, spicy tuna rolls. Ooh, that sounds good. <laughs> what is your dream job? Oh, to become a famous director in Hollywood and be the next Issa Rae, basically. <laughs> I love Issa Rae. Favorite song? Well, right now it's um, Nena, which is spelled N-E-N-A by this amazing Dominican um, R&B artist, uh, Yendri. Okay. Favorite hobby? Ooh. I've been really getting into high intensity Pilates um, as a way to recover and rehabilitate my body after four years of volleyball. <laughs> um, so that's been amazing. But I also would say um, baking as well for something non-sportsy. Favorite athletic conference? No problem uh, here. <laughs> <laughs> that's an easy one, Centennial Conference. <laughs> Thank you, Emma, for joining us. Everybody can tune in each week for a new episode of the Centennial Conference. You can Conference Corner. You can find us on YouTube, Twitter, Instagram at Centennial Conf and at Centennial.org. Thank you guys. See you later.